Hi, I am Dr. Sakim Mansoor and this is my channel Learning Anatomy for You. And uh, as you know, I have started with you a series of lectures on the bones of the upper limb. First of all, I did clavicle and today I will do scapula or the shoulder plate. This is the anterior view of the scapula and this is the posterior view. I will discuss in detail the bony features and its attachments. So you could see this is the posterior aspect of the human being. And the scapula is known as a shoulder blade. It's a triangular flat bone. Its body is thin and translucent. As you could see, this body, this is thin and translucent. It lies on the posterolateral aspect of the thorax. Yes, this is the posterolateral aspect. It overlies the second to seventh ribs, right? These are the ribs and it overlies the second to seventh ribs. You could see a more um, a better view. This is the, you know, anterior view. This is scapula, clavicle, and this is a humerus, right? And I discuss in detail, uh, some detail uh, in the, my video on the shoulder giant. Here you could see, and this is a posterior view, right? This is the clenohumeral joint, right? This is the clavicle making the acromioclavicular joint here. So the scapula features, the bony features. And I will discuss with you point-wise. First of all, I will discuss surfaces with foci, borders, angles, processes, glenoid cavity, tubercles, notches, head, and neck. And uh, surfaces. First of all, the first surface, the three surfaces are First of all is the costal surface. You could see this is the costal surface, right? It is concave. You could see this is concave. And it is directed medially and forwards. Three longitudinal ridges are there. One, two, and three. The three longitudinal ridges on this costal surface. It has the concave subscapular fossa. This whole thing, this is the subscapular fossa. I have labeled for that. Subscapular fossa. Here you could see this is the subscapular fossa for you. So it fits the convex chest wall. This dorsal surface. This is the dorsal surface. It has attachments to the spine. You could see this is the spine of the scapula, which divides it into a smaller supraspinous. This is a supraspinal fossa and the larger infraspinous fossa, right? This spine of the scapula divides it into supraspinous and infraspinous fossa, right? Respectively, dorsal surface, right? So there is one spinoglenoid notch. Here you could see this. So these supraglenoid and the infraglenoid fossa are uh, connected to each other via this spinoglenoid notch, right? So the borders and the angles. Again, three borders and three angles. Borders, first of all. The border, first of all, is the medial border, right? Here you could see this is the medial border. This is a dorsal surface to show that this is the medial border, right? And then is the lateral or axillary border, which is the thicker one, right? The, this is the lateral border is the thicker one. Medial or the vertebral border is a uh, thinner one. And then is a superior, which is the thinnest and the shortest of the three borders, right? This is the superior border. You could see this is labeled for you, right? Here you could see this is superior border. Then the three angles. First of all, this is the superior angle. Here you could see this. This should be the superior angle. Then is the lateral angle, right? This is the lateral surface and the acromial or lateral angle. Here you could see this is the acromial angle or the lateral angle. Then is the inferior angle. Here you, you could see this. This is the inferior angle, right? Then the process is very important with bearing various attachments. First of all, I told you already spine, right? Till delta tubercle of the scapular spine, right? This is the, you know, spine. You could see this is the spine of the scapula. Then is the acromion, right? Acromion, right? You could, this is the acromion. This, this is the acromion. This spine continues laterally as flat expanded acromion. This, this is acromion and uh, this acromion. This is the acromion and this is the continuation of the spine. This is spine and the continuation of the spine is the acromion. 
Korakite process, right? This is very important. Korakite process, right? Korakite process. This is anteriorly visible. And uh, it is derived from a Greek word, means like a coarse peak. It is superior to the glenoid cavity. This is glenoid cavity, and it is superior to that and projects anterolaterally. This is the anterolateral projection, right? This is it. This process is also similar in shape, size, and direction to a bent finger pointing to the shoulder. So it has a base and a tip, right? This is here. And uh, let me zoom in for you this uh, picture. Yes, you see clearly this crow's beak, right? This is the coracite process. You could see also in this picture, this is the coracite process. See, this is the crow's beak. This is a also a band finger here. This is a, it is lying inferior to the, this glenoid cavity, superior to the glenoid cavity. This is glenoid cavity. This is a coracite process. Now let's discuss about the head and neck of the scapula. Head of the scapula, right? This is the head of the scapula. This thing over here, this is the head of the scapula, right? And a lateral border ends at the lateral angle of the scapula that bears a broad head of the scapula, right? This is the lateral border. It ends, and this is here. It has the head. Glenoid cavity. This is here. It is. This is the glenoid cavity, more visible, visible from the lateral aspect. This is the dorsal aspect. Now this is the lateral aspect, right? Here you could see this is the glenoid cavity, making a joint with the humerus. This is the glenohumeral joint, the shoulder joint. Neck of the scapula, shallow construction between head and body, right? This is a neck, right? Neck of the scapula. This is a shallow construction. You could see this is a construction between the head and this is the body. Then is a suprascapular notch, right? Suprascapular notch. It is, lies at the superior border near the junction of its medial two thirds and lateral third by the suprascapular notch. Here you could see this is a suprascapular notch. Again, you we will discuss glenoid cavity. Supralaterally, lateral surface of the scapula has this glenoid cavity. Greek word means socket, which receives and articulates with the humeral head at the glenohumeral joint. I, I already told you that. This is a shallow concave oval fossa. Here you could see. It is directed anterolaterally and slightly uh, superiorly considerably smaller than the ball humeral head for which it acts as a socket. So that accounts for the mobility of the shoulder joint. This, this is the same picture. Now let's talk about few tubercles, which is the supraglenoid tubercle and the infraglenoid tubercle. This is the glenoid cavity. Superior to it is the supraglenoid tubercle and inferior to it is the infraglenoid tubercle. This is from the lateral view. So let's determine its side, how the side of the scapula is determined, whether it's left or right. So lateral angle, large as the glenoid cavity, right? This you could see this, you could see this is the lateral angle. This is the lateral side having the glenoid cavity. Here you could see here, dorsal surface. This is the dorsal surface. Uh, I think this is enough to determine the side, anterior, posterior, dorsal surface. You could see this, this it has the... Uh, the spine, spine of the scapula, which uh, divides into supraspinous and the infraspinous fossae. So then the costal surface, I've showed you already, it has a concave subscapular fossa to fit onto the convex chest wall. And then the thickest lateral border, this is a lateral border, so very thick, right? It runs from glenoid cavity here, from the glenoid cavity to the inferior angle below. Here it runs, follow the laser. You could see again the sclenoid cavity, lateral side, right? Now, finally, the attachments of the scapula. What are the muscles, ligaments attached to the various parts to the, of the scapula? You see again, these are the various muscles. You can see all this is from the anterior point of view. There is something um, like uh, 17 muscles attached to the scapula. And few very important, like uh, this uh, cracoclavicular ligament, very, very important. So this is the, this is a posterior view as well, right? And this, these are the ligaments. Again, this cracoclavicular ligament, this is a trapezoid part, and this is a conoid part. So scapula, right? Attachments, very important. Costal surface, this is the costal or the anterior surface. 
it has three or four ridges. I told you already that converge from the medial border towards the lateral angles. These provide attachments to the fibrous septa from which the fibers of the multipennate subscapularis arise, right? This is the attachment of the subscapularis, right? This is the costal surface. The muscle is attached to the medial two thirds, right? This is the medial two thirds. This is bare, not it. Muscle is not attached here. The lateral third is bare and separated from overlying muscle by a subscapularis bursa. Here is the subscapularis bursa. Then the uh, medial margin of the costal surface is even then receives sensation of the stratus interior. This is stratus interior label, right? This is the medial margin, right? You could see this is stratus interior. First two digestions, this is important discussion. First two digestion of uh, stratus interior attached from the superior angle down to the base of the spine. From the superior angle down to the base of the spine, first two digitations of the serratus interior. The next two digitations take a longer route and uh, are thinned out from this level down to the inferior angle, from here to here, right? And get converged to a rough area on right into the inferior angle, but they hear the last four digitations are converged to a rough area on the costal surface of inferior angle, right? Here, this is the thing. You know, there are the eight digitations of the um, you know, stratus interior. First two from uh, are attached over here, next two into a larger area here, and the last four are converged over here to the inferior angle here, the rough area. Suprascapular notch, you could see this is the suprascapular notch and it lodges a suprascapular nerve. Notch is bridged by the suprascapular ligament. Here, it's a ligament. Here, you could see inferior belly of the omohyoid. Here, it's a muscle labeled inferior belly of the omohyoid takes origin from this ligament and the nearby upper border of the scapula. Here, it's upper border of the scapula. Here, this is the omohyoid inferior belly. Then the medial border, right? This is the, you know, medial border. Let's talk about that from superior to the inferior angle. This is a superior angle. This is the inferior angle, right? Uh, there is attached muscle or the levator scapuli, right? This is the levator scapuli. Here you could see this. Then the rhomboid minor. This is a rhomboid minor. And then is this rhomboid major, right? Yeah, you could see. Let me enlarge this picture for you for better, clearer view. Want the crystal clear concept, right? This is you could see. This is the levator scapuli. This is the rhomboid minor, and this is the rhomboid major, right? This is the three muscles attached to the medial border, right? So then uh, there is long head of the triceps. Where it is attached, you, you could see this. Attached to the infraglenoid tubercle. Showed you the two tubercles, supraglenoid and the infraglenoid tubercles. Then supraspinatus and infraspinatus, where they are attached. You could see this supraspinous fossa gives attachment to the supraspinatus, and the infraspinous fossa gives attachment to the infraspinous, right? Infraspinatus. So these are the medial two thirds of the respective fossae. Teres major from a large oval area at the inferior angle, right? This is the teres major. You, you could see this laser, follow the laser, teres major. Teres minor, you could see this is teres minor. Follow the laser, teres minor, right? Arises from an elongated narrower area, dorsal to the lateral border. Suprascapular vessel and nerve run across supraspinous notch to reach the infraspinous fossa here you reach there dorsal surface of the spine and acromion are subcutaneous and palpable right you can feel it with your hand fingers so let's talk about spine attachment trapezius you could see this let's first of all identify this trapezius and deltoid here you could see this is trapezius attached to the superior uh, border of the, the spine. And this is the deltoid from the superior border continuing to the acromion. So trapezius is attached to the medial border of the acromion. Here, this is the medial border of the acromion and the upper margin of the spine. And here, this is the medial margin of the acromion. And this is the upper border of the 
spine. This attachment takes a curved around, curve around a tubercle just lateral to the medial end of the spine. The lower most fibers of the trapezius converge here to the tubercle. Medial end of the spine is smooth, right? Medial end is smooth and is separated from the trapezius by the bursa. So that's what's talking about. You said you will talk about deltoid here. Yes, this is the deltoid remaining here. here. Uh, this is arises along inferior margin of the spine. This is the inferior margin of the spine, steep, right? And from the posterior lateral and the anterior borders of the chromia. You see again in the zoom aspect, you could see this. You could see this. This is the deltoid. Yes, this is deltoid. You could see this. This is a chromia and this is the spine. Right, inferior angle, inferior border. Along its lateral border, the chromion shows four or more vertical edges for attachment of the septa in the multi cross central mass of deltoid. We all know that deltoid has three parts anterior, lateral, or acromial, the multi and the posterior. In front of the facet for uh, acromioclavicular joint, fibers of the cracoacromial ligament. Converge, right? This is a point. Greco acromial ligament converge over here in front of the facet for acromo acromioclavicular giant. Here would be this. And uh, beneath the ligament and the bare uh, bone of the acromion, subacromial, the subdeltoid bursa acts to lubricate the tendon of the supraspinatus and the rotator cuff. Above the greco acromial ligament, the deltoid origin continues cross acromion to the lateral part of the clavica. Margins of the glenoid cavity provide attachment to the glenoid labrum. Right here you could see this is the glenoid cavity. Here, these are the margins. Follow the laser. And here is the glenoid labrum attached. Um, I have given five uh, videos of the as you know, shoulder giant and its clinicals. Mm -hmm. uh, total five videos. And you can go there for anything uh, regarding the gleno glenohumeral, the shoulder giant. So, Supraglenoid tubercle provides attachment to a long head of the biceps, right? This is long head of the biceps, supraglenoid tubercle. And the infraglenoid tubercle provides attachment to the long head of the triceps. So, conoid ligament. This is cracoacromial ligament in total. Conoid part and the trapezoid ligament. Conoid part of the conoid ligament is attached by its apex to the knuckle of the coracoid process. This is the coracoid process, very prominent. This is the knuckle. From here, a line goes towards the tip for attachment to trapezoid ligament, right? This is the trapezoid ligament. This is here. This is the line going from this knuckle to here, coracoid process. Lateral margin of coracoid process gives attachment to the base of the cracoacromial ligament, right? Cracoacromial ligament. This is the cracoacromial ligament, right? This is the cracoacromial ligament from the coracoid process to the acromion. Weaker cracohumeral ligament. This is the cracohumeral ligament. This um, runs from the undersurface of the coracoid process to the uh, anatomical neck of the humerus, right? This, the, uh, you know, cracohumeral ligament. This is a cracohumeral ligament. You could see this cracohumeral ligament. This is weak. And it runs from the undersurface of the coracoid process to the anatomical neck of the humerus. This is the anatomical neck. What pectoralis minor, right? So let's identify pectoralis minor. Here, this is the pectoralis minor, right? Here it is, pectoralis minor. Let's identify, then I will talk about that. This is the pectoralis minor, right? This is pectoralis minor. And it is attached to the medial border and the upper surface of the coracoid process. Tip of the coracoid process. This is the tip. It provides attachment to the two muscles short of the biceps and the cracobrachialis. Let me zoom in. You could see this tip of the uh, coracoid process provides attachment to the cracobrachialis and the short end of the biceps. Right? So let's move on. Uh, to the um, end of the lecture and I thank you very much for uh, this uh, listening and I, I request you to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for the next lecture on humorous. Thank you very much. Take care. Stay safe. Goodbye.